Hello and welcome to my YouTube vlog for January 25th, 2012. Well, as peop most of you out there who have already been uh, viewing my YouTube vlogs for a number of years, maybe a few since I've been making them, know that I generally shy away from speaking about issues of politics. However, something happened last night in my life that I wanted to discuss here with you. I think there's a message in here that everybody, uh, no matter who they are, can relate to. Now, I want to start out by saying something I may have already pointed out in one of my vlogs already, but I don't make too fine a point about. Among all the other things I am, I am biracial. One part of me, Caucasian. One part of me, African American. And then there's a lot of other things in between that. I could go on and on all day. I think they call it a Heinz 57. But that's not really the point here. There's another man out there who has a similar racial background. He's the President of the United States, Barack Obama. Now, I haven't really discussed much of my opinion on him over the years. But this is an election year, and last night I played host, as with billions of people all over the country, to his State of the Union address for the year, Barack Obama's State of the Union address. Uh, four years ago, I saw his first. I was absolutely enthralled with his power as an orator and his speaking ability and his honest understanding of human relations and need and relentless pursuit of the truth, even for people who didn't necessarily want to hear it. And... I watched last night for the express purpose to see that after four years of all the political wrangling and dangling you often have to do in the role of president, if he had lost any of that fervor and power in his tone. And actually, upon my witness, I could say that he actually gained more, gained more energy, gained more momentum, gained more power, and is not willing to take no for an answer on the things that he stands for. Now, there are, as with anybody, a few things that I do not agree politically with Barack Obama on. They're probably not all that important in the larger scheme of things. But I wanted to emphasize that on YouTube, for the next eight days, there is actually a program. I'm sure many of you who watch YouTube right now see a small red telephone next to the YouTube logo that says, Call Obama. He is going to be taking suggestions on his uh, presidential YouTube channel for issues that he is going to be discussing. He will pick four of them on a discussion at the end of the month, a post-state of the Union address from the people. And there will be lucky contestants who will be able to have a meet and greet, I suppose, afterward. Um, in my lifetime, I have very seldom seen a president be so continually involved, and I have seen such activity all through his presidency. Now, as far as how I feel about the State of the, Un the Union Address, um, Barack Obama made important mention of something that I feel is very important, that all the difficulties we have in this country right now, whether it be um, social and racial problems of any kind, employment, economy, um, all of this can be linked to one thing, education, or the lack of it. And when we talk about education, we refer to the public school system. That's where we go for six, seven hours a day, I used to anyway, and we sit in a class and learn from a book or a teacher and memorize events, names, dates, places, periodic tables, or whatever we're learning, and then we go home and do the homework and proceed with our daily lives. We learn from memorization and that goes into something called standardized testing. Now, to my personal way of thinking, that does not necessarily constitute for a proper education. Now, I've been homeschooled, was homeschooled, I should say, since I was in grade six, for personal reasons. And they were not religious, I want to make that abundantly clear. And one of those personal reasons 
or that I felt while I was learning in school, I was not genuinely getting an education. I was not experiencing life. There were things forced upon me. So I decided to take it upon myself, and my family did, to make a change for that. Um, ever since then, I have heard very little concrete presidential support for alternative ways of viewing education that could accommodate everyone, no matter how different they were. And Barack Obama discussed um, changing the way in which you perceive teachers, uh, making provisions for teachers with a reputation for excellence, and basically weeding out those who seem to simply be going by the book and neglecting the education of the students and therefore the next generation. And I would not want to see somebody lose their job, but I believe that inspiration and teacher training is very important. And I am very supportive of his very significant stance on education and improving it and looking into alternative methods and improving those making public school and other schools a better place. So there's a more diversified um, set of circumstances to get educated. So we don't have to spend all our lives studying and studying and studying in colleges like most of my friends now. I'm sure you know the old cliche today, working and going to school. You know, if people like Barack Obama and himself can make their needs into law and their ideas into law, I should say, I can see a future where that may not have to happen, where there will be other methods of education that are more humanistic, that are less alienating. Also, at the end of his speech, he made a long, I believe, 15, 10-minute um, aspect of his address talking about the importance of bipartisanship, about America being a great country only if it acknowledges its place in the world stage and not merely as the world. That we are not a rock and an island onto ourselves, but we are a part of many nations. And in order to be strong, we must acknowledge ourselves as a part. Now, I can see how that could make many people uncomfortable, and I do expect there to be some very hostile comments on this vlog at some point, maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, and I may not like them, but I'll have to accept that they're there because I acknowledge they exist. But the fact of the matter is, is that society, especially with the last administration, which is a whole different story, has been divided into camps. Democrats, independents, Republicans, conservatives, um, uh, Christians, um, Christian right, Christian this, so many camps. I can hardly name them all. And they all seem to want to fight with each other. It seems like, as the um, uh, anti-nuclear activist said, Dr. Helen Caldicott, that this is all the mentality of uh, a nine-year-old arguing over minutia in a sandbox, over who's got the bigger toy truck or the biggest biceps. It all seems very juvenile to me. And I mean, you know, I've had my juvenile moments, as we all have, but I would not define myself by them. And I don't believe that this nation or any other nation in the world should either. And I think that the importance of being an adult in the world, or being an adult as a country, as a nation, of a nation growing up, should be what every other adult life form has to face. The need of an animal to live within their um, world of other animals. The need of human beings to be able to deal with each other, to be able to tolerate each other. And to be honest, among people who have worked in high level of governments, I haven't seen a lot of that level of maturity. I'm sorry I admit to say. And I think his message is an important one. Now back to the issue of criticism here, that revolves around the fact of the big issue. It does not have to be a big issue. I am very sad and disappointed that it has to be. But so much of it comes down to the fact that I was on this presidential page where he was asking uh, YouTubers to give send him questions to address on this post State of the Union address, and I read through some of the questions. 
um, a lot of people actually were stating um, very sensible things about education, about how children were being treated, how families were dealing with economic questions. You know, some of them seem to have come from more or less conservative backgrounds or more radical backgrounds, but they all have some common sense and I could appreciate them. But one person asked, and this was all said in caps letters, and you know, I never probably will forget this for the rest of my life, all in cap letters. Their question to Barack Obama was, are you a Muslim? Now that should not be a surprise. And I'm sure that he's been aware of all the questions asked him. Are you African? Are you foreign? Are you, therefore, an American? Well, as many of you know, for the last 70 or 80 years, um, anybody who remembers the 1950s, there's been a very consistent fear in America about foreigners and about people from other countries, and especially people who might take away jobs from us or who might make us our lives economically difficult. Um, there is such a thing as illegal immigration, and as controversial an issue as that is, it is happening. But it runs a little deeper than that. If an American president is judged by his race or his religion, and Barack Obama is being judged by these criterions, I think all sensible Americans need to understand that. It may not be comfortable, but they need to understand that he is being judged by outward criterions of race and religion. How does that, and this is a question to all YouTubers, how does that reflect well on the broader goals of America, the land of the free? We have faced this issue many, many times with civil rights for black people, for women's rights. We have faced this issue many, many times. How far do we extend our freedoms? Is it only for a select few or for some? It seems, again, as if there are two parties wanting to win out. Two sets of young people, nine-year-olds, um, immaturely fighting over who's going to be dominant. And what impressed me most about Barack Obama's speech is that these are all concerns that I've had all my life. They have caused great personal depression in my life, and... Uh, great personal joys when I have seen some of them end, and I have seen some of them end in my lifetime, some of these trials and tribulations. They have affected me greatly, and I'm sure they've affected many Americans out there. And the most important thing about Barack Obama that I feel is that he has actually taken it in his heart and in his head to address these problems directly, realistically, and optimistically. He has gained more critics, I'm sure, than anybody could possibly have ever imagined. But he has always told the truth as he has seen it. And many others see it the same way. I do. Uh, whether you are a second-term president or not, Barack Obama, I just wanted to say to you and your supporters, congratulations for standing your ground and what you have been, and for helping us, as uh, uh, George Clinton once said, to not tell us what to think, but to let us know that we can think. Thank you all for your time.